Good to have everybody back. Who's first? Many very early first day, but Derek looked crisp, looked well on that knee. What did it look like from your point of view? It looked like nothing had happened. I mean, it just, you know, you see the guy spin some of the throws in there. And what I actually really liked was, and I, and I felt he was intentional a couple times, he, he took off and he ran. And, you know, we're going to be a quick whistle, especially today we're just playing tag. But you could see he wanted to, to go and know he could go and, and back up what he had done with our training staff and our PT staff and our strength staff in the summer. So you have to ask him, but I, I, it, looked, it looked good to me. Side of the coin, a lot of overhaul, a lot of changes on that defensive coaching staff. How did the players, and especially on the first day, implement the new coaching staff and the defensive schemes you have going? Well, you know, we went through spring ball with this staff as well, and we've been able to have meetings in the summertime. So I, you know, I think the relationships are sound now with the new staff and, and the defensive players. I, I look, no matter whether they're the new staff or not, you know, you, you spend training camp these two weeks of really trying to forge the identity of a defense and you know today day one in, in in helmets is is a step but you know i told them afterwards the adversity is coming and and that's how we'll find out really who we are yeah welcome good to meet you uh, i wanted to ask about uh cameron williams and jeremiah payton you noticed they went on the roster uh to start practice any reason for why yeah um so cameron williams and jalar holly uh, they just didn't meet our you know basically our standards academically to to be here uh, Jeremiah right now is in a different boat than those two guys. Jeremiah is just not in a place right now where playing football is what he wants to do, and we're kind of supporting him through that. Um, don't know what that means for him in his future, uh, but right now he's just where, where he's at. He's just not, football is not, not something that he can uh, devote himself to. So we're going to give him space to, to kind of be in that, in that, in that area. Yeah, John, John unfortunately had a, um, a pretty serious knee injury this summer, um, so we doubt we'd have him available in the summer. Sam Brooks, to me, they said, you know, as the week goes on, should do more and more progressed individual and should be out here sometime during training camp. Mitty, you talked about the air. Um, when he takes off at this point, first day of camp, the way he was doing today, obviously he's building the confidence and everything. Do you kind of like, you know, take a deep breath and get nervous at all or anything? <laughs> well, those are two different things, right? Taking a deep breath and getting nervous, or that's not that's not the same reaction. So, you know, I'll be honest, look, I mean, you know what was going to happen. So I'm standing there watching, and, and, and again, you'll have to ask him, but I felt like there were a couple times where he wanted to go. And I didn't know what he was going to do today, you know? And, um, but it looked like he, he, you know, he felt good about it, and he went down the field, and, and, you know, and I think that'll be something that, you know, as the weeks go on, it'll just help him with his confidence, which definitely helps us with all of our confidences. <laughs> Like a different day one compared to other day ones, like in terms of being crisp. Or that, that's possible. Yeah, I would I would say so. I mean, um, you know, I think just getting that back to the tempo and in, in the heat. I think you know that's always an adjustment there. But where you probably see the, the the difference is the depth between the first two groups and the execution level. A couple groups in. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but basically, we probably had 44 guys run with a starting lineup today. Um, ones, twos, basically both go in the same direction. So um, the, the fact that we could do that, you don't know, see great drop-offs or, or somebody in there that makes a play non-functional is probably a, a testament to the age and our depth. We saw uh, Ja'Kai Clark out there today. Yeah, Ja'Kai. I, I, I didn't even think he'd be here. But same thing, but limited. You know what I mean? So he's, just, he's going through the, you know, doing some individual drills, and then it'll, everything will work uh, on from that. Yeah, that's that's our starting quarterback. No, yeah, that's, that's that's the only starter we have. But yeah. You know, but I mean, with all the health questions, you're, he's passed them as far as we're concerned. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, it's August whatever six, and I mean, he was without restriction today, and uh, I, it's not my choice. He's not going to let me not start my quarterback. I mean, I, I mean, he's going to run through the first play. It doesn't matter who else we put out there at quarterback. He, we're going to have to call a timeout. We're going to have 12 on the field because he'll be out there. Hey, Manny, the choice to go night, I guess, for the first two weeks, old school came to say, oh, they had us out there sweating early in the sun. Now, what, do you, what do you say to those old school games who want you guys uh, <laughs> grueling through the summer days? <laughs> well, they, I would have, they, they all could have come out at, at, at when we started practicing and been out there for that time. Um, they can also step into our tempo offense and see how, try that on for size. We were out in the sun every day. In two weeks, we start school. 
and we practice at the hottest time in Miami all day long. Now, I know this. We start in the air conditioning at 3.30 in Atlanta, right, and then we play here at night. We will get all the heat acclimatization, and we're out there running 110s and doing boxes and sand pit all summer. We eat the heat around here, I promise you. So if anybody doesn't want to, they, they can come and ask any of our guys to go out there, and our guys will gladly run them anywhere they want to run them. The freshmen, did any of them impress you with keeping their head above water today? Ah, I mean, you know, it's, it's so early. I mean, I mean, it was hard to pick out, you know, in the line to get in helmets. It's kind of hard to pick out. It looked like Brinson had a couple of good catches. Some guys that were here in the spring, you know, Kitchens had an interception at the end. Um, good to see James Williams running around back there in the secondary, but <laughs> well, we're, they're, it, it was it was going a little fast for all those guys today, but it was good. We kept them all. Our freshmen were playing them all in the threes for the th first three days. We, we can control some of the calls, you know, kind of control some of the tempo with those guys and let, let them at least get their sea legs. As a class, how do you feel like they've Oh, I think this is a phenomenal class. I mean, in terms of, you know, the stuff they do on campus, the stuff they've done in the weight room, the stuff they've done in academic center, they, they have, you know, I, I thought our last class was pretty good. You just ask people around the building, training room, academic advisors, this, this 21 class, they're different, they're special. Maybe it's a little off topic, and not so much on the U, but focusing on uh, former Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden, the relationship with him, the news of his terminal medical condition. Just speak a little bit about what he meant to you, to the game of college football, and just the football in general. Well, I was, I was so fortunate that my introduction into this profession was sitting in a staff meeting room with, with, with Bobby Bowden every day. Um, and at this point, he'd already won a national championship. We won another one while we were there. And the person you saw on TV and his, his you know, in my mind, selflessness, uh, the humility, uh, servant leadership, that was the exact same guy he was inside the building. And the way he led that program with the lack of ego, um, at that time, when you're a young coach, that, that's, that's your North Star. That's what you, that's what you want to be. That, that's, you know, and um, so to me, the fact that he won as many games as he won and yet also was who he was as a, as a man um, shows that you can do both. You, you can win a ton of games and, and be a great person like Coach Bowden is. Manny, you guys haven't had many situations like you did with Avante Williams. Obviously, I know you guys dismissed him, but the lesson learned for, for the kids and just what can you sort of say about that? We haven't had a chance to ask him. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we, we talked to our guys about that. Um, you know, it can be just one poor decision, one poor choice. Um, unfortunately, it has consequences. So, um, um, you know, I hate to just trivialize, uh, trivialize it as, as just a learning incident, but, but certainly I think, you know, we, 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 we spoke to our team about it and, and um, you know, and, and what it means, and, and, and hopefully we all can learn from it going forward. Let's do two more guys. Manny, what kind of uh, feeling are you getting from the defensive kids having you back in charge? Are you getting the results that you were looking for by doing that? I don't know if it has anything to do with me being in charge per se. I just think we have a hungry room of players on defense. You know what I mean? Um, they have pride. Uh, they know that there's a standard of how we play here at Miami, and, and they, they get it, you know. Um, but they also know that what happened a year ago doesn't carry into a, this, this following season with us. And this is a very similar movie to what we saw from 15 to 16, where they, there was just this stigma that was following the kids around and and we had to find a way that mentally we can let that thing go in the past um and and choose to write our own story for for this version of the defense so i think that experience and of course it's great to have zach mcleod who was a member of the 16 defense and the 21 defense around but uh i think i, th I think that's really what they feel it really whether i'm calling defense is not really the most important thing in that equation Manny, where's the team at from a, a vaccination percentage standpoint and how much has that you know process been emphasized after what happened last year, all the Yeah, so we are, and I mentioned this in Charlotte, if, you know, we're waiting on two weeks from the second shot where you get fully vaccinated to be at 85%, but we will be at 85% when, when that happens. Okay, so that's, that's happening in the next week or so, okay? Which is, so that was the benchmark we wanted to hit. Um, maybe some others will sign up. Obviously, I think today we set the record for highest number of cases in the state of Florida since the whole thing started. Uh, so it's real, it's, it's here. Um, and you know, these guys, we gotta go back in the same mode as a year ago. We gotta protect the team and, and protect the program because uh, you know, it is, it, it had, here we are 12 months later and we're still dealing with the same stuff. Do you worry about the 15% derailing things at all? Of, of course, you know, but, but 
you know, again, we, we've given them the freedom of choice, but as one thing we've learned in the pandemic, freedom of choice is not the same as freedom of consequence. And uh, we will adjust the same way we've adjusted uh, last year. And Al, last plays, Al plays, uh, how, how is he doing? And, you know, he was good. I saw him in some drills early on, an individual, which is good for him. Um, our PTs are kind of progressing him through some uh, different side-to-side -side movements. Um, but to me, I think he's a big part of our, of our plans going forward. Okay, okay. Thank, you, thank you all. Great to see everybody again.